Returning to our top story now, another investigation has been launched into the treatment of cattle in Indonesia. Fresh footage of animals has been aired showing they're not being stunned or killed humanely. Labor backbencher Kelvin Thompson is calling for mandatory stunning. He's talking with our political editor, Lyndall Curtis. Kelvin Thompson, welcome to ABC News 24. What do you think of the footage that Lateline showed last night of abattoirs in Indonesia? Even though it's not confirmed the cattle came from Australia, the minister has said the community would be horrified by it. Do you share his view? Uh, I, I certainly do, Lyndall. The, the footage is... Uh just sickening and, and completely unacceptable and I've spoken to a number of my Labor colleagues about this issue this morning and they have exactly the same view. Uh, the idea of animals having their throats slit uh, without being stunned is unacceptable and to see animals hitting their heads on the, the metal floor uh, it is sickening and horrifying. Should, should stunning be mandatory? Well I've always believed that uh, Lyndall, it's a view I've uh, been expressing for quite some time now that uh, the best way to guarantee that animal welfare standards are maintained is to ensure that all animals are stunned. How, how do you achieve that though? How can an Australian government tell uh, companies in another country what to do and how to do it? Uh, well, uh, we're the ones who are responsible for the export processes and therefore that is an option which is available to us. Uh, what the government has put in place is a set of supply chain assurance arrangements which I understand it is now using. Uh, I've asked the Minister's office, uh, are these animals Australian? Uh, are these abattoirs Australian accredited? And these matters are being investigated. Uh, clearly, uh, any exporter who is found to have allowed their animals to be treated in this way should have their licence revoked. But is it, is it possible for the Australian Government to put in a process which in, will ensure 100% adherence to the standards the Australian Government expects all the time? Uh, well, the Australian Government has put in place a process which enables it to track what happens to particular animals. It is now using that process to investigate these particular incidents uh, and it would be my expectation and everyone else's I think that if exporters have allowed the wrong thing to happen that they should have their licences revoked. But it's, and, but it's and not a perfect world and just because something happens once doesn't mean it's going to happen all the time, does that, it? That, that is true but the, the problem is clearly that these uh, instances of mistreatment are, are not isolated or occasional. I mean, we've, we've had the industry over the years saying that these things are the exception. Unfortunately, the work of Animals Australia and the animal, other animal welfare groups suggests that these incidents are not isolated and that we do need to have in place a system that ensures that they won't happen. You say you've spoken to a number of your colleagues. Is there any push from those who are disturbed by the footage on late line to do anything inside the government? Well, we will be having discussions, uh, obviously, with the government and, and with colleagues uh, over the next few days about these issues. People remain concerned about animal welfare issues and about the treatment of cattle exported to Indonesia uh, and are determined to ensure that proper animal welfare standards are observed. Uh, I, I noticed, for example, a, a call from the New South Wales RSPCA uh, recently in the context of an Australian abattoir, let me say, for uh, CCTV. Now, if the industry cannot achieve results via self-regulation, you will see those sorts of calls increase and increase pressure on the industry because people are expecting that proper and decent animal welfare standards will be observed. Even if there is mandatory stunning, scenes from inside an abattoir will all be, always be confronting to a lot of people who've never seen it before, won't they? It's, it's not a, an easy process. Mm. They, they will be confronting to some, there's no question about that, uh, but we do have in place in Australia animal welfare standards that I believe are appropriate and if those standards are observed that proper animal welfare uh, conditions will prevail and organisations like the RSPCA and Animals Australia and so on would support that and clearly uh, stunning is key to that and the, the animal welfare organisations have said that uh, stunning is, is necessary and, and so if you have that in place then I believe that uh, most people, not all, but most people would be satisfied that animal welfare is being protected. What does it say to you that there have been many MPs, including yourself, willing to raise your voices in protest at the treatment of Australian live cattle exports?
but none I've heard raise voices in protest about stories at the treatment of workers in factories in Asia, which make many of the goods that Australians are, Australians are happy to buy, including the Foxconn factory, which makes many of the consumer technology goods Australians are happy to buy, where there are reports of suicides, of onerous working conditions and, and serious safety problems. Uh, I think that's an important issue, and I and others have raised these concerns in the Parliament. Uh, I've, I've also met with civil society organisations who've raised those concerns with me and said that uh, workers in other countries are are being outrageously exploited. Uh, there's an organisation called Stop the Traffic which talks about the use of uh, young people in particular who've been sold into slavery and uh, in, in the workplace uh, and treated outrageously. And I am supportive of their view that we need to make sure that when we are importing products into Australia uh, that they have been produced by labour under fair and appropriate working conditions. It doesn't seem though to have the same kind of level of concern from the community, does well, it? Well, I, I give you full marks for raising it with me, Lyndall. Regrettably, it is not often the subject of media and public debate and focus. That is not to say that there is no interest in it. People do talk about it. But I agree with you that there ought to be more focus on it. It is unacceptable that people should be treated in the way that some are being treated. Kevin Thompson, thank you very much for your time. Good to talk with you. Lyndall Curtis there, our political editor, talking to Kelvin Thompson.